Hi guys, Jurassic Junkie here and welcome to the first episode of Start and Finish of Next Gen. Well, current gen as it would be now. And the first game that I actually want to review is Rise Son of Rome. So before I dive in, just a little bit of background about this game. It originally shown its face about two years ago at E3. It's been created by Crytek and when they actually first shown this game off, as impressive as it did look, it was actually a fully connect based game. Now the feedback was a bit mixed and a lot of people said as good as it actually looked and it was fun to play, people don't want to play just Connect. And I personally feel the same, I like when Connect's slightly been bolted onto a game, it's not has to be used and it's just there if you want it. And luckily enough Crytek listened, went back to the drawing boards and has actually recreated the game. So now this is just a complete controller based game with a few Connect commands that can actually be said to help you in battle. Now if you're not down with the actual connects, that's not a problem because anything that you can actually say to your TV, you can actually ignore if you want and just press your left bumper button which is the same as shouting a command. But personally I actually find it quite enjoyable to shout out fire volley in the middle of a fight because it is one of them ones that you want to actually be watching the game all the time and watching how people are attacked so you can actually defend against it and I don't want to take a second or two to actually press on the button, it's easy to just shout out fire arrows. So you play as the character Marius Titus, and I don't want to go too much into the actual story. A few people who that reviewed it have gave you a bit more detail of the story, but personally, I find it an absolute pleasure to play through because these this is one of the games that is so gorgeous to actually lock. As the story unfolds, it's absolutely great because the level of detail in the actual character's mocaps is just the best that I've seen, and it's so good as the story evolves and things twist and turn, and just, some things might go wrong. Let's just say that, but. To see it on their faces is absolutely amazing. So all I'll say is this story is just about revenge and you will lead the Roman army to go on and conquer some people. So what is this game then? Well it's a pure fighter which has got a heavy dependent on actually defence. So it's not just a hack and slash and you go through chopping people up, it is actually heavy on making sure that you counter people, dodge out of the way and then attack at the right times. The best way to compare the combat is it very much like Batman. So it's very simple controls such as attack, dodge, push, and also you've got a beautiful button called the execution. Now as simple as the controls actually are, you can actually get into the real nitty gritty of fighting. Now when I first started out, I was just simply attacking people and rolling out the way. But as I actually got better at the game and realised that actually combos count and not getting hit actually helps, I started stringing some great combos together. But let's talk a little about these executions. Now, I actually saw these when I first actually got my hands on it at game. And I was a tiny little bit sceptical because what happens is when you actually go to execute somebody and the way to do so is to get the life bar down to practically nothing and then you can actually execute them, it goes into a quick time event. Now, anytime you say quick time event, a lot of people go, ooh. And the thing is, the reason that people hate quick times is because a lot of lazy developers use quick times so you don't have to play the game, you just press the buttons and it's a railroad boring game. But quick time can be used correctly and this game does so. So what will happen is when you actually go to execute your enemy, they'll actually go into a slow down mode and what you'll have to do is either press yellow or blue depending on what the attack is and actually get it right. This then leads into a great little kind of cutscene where you'll actually take off limbs, you'll actually slit throats, there's lots of different ones and I was actually shocked by this because I actually thought after I've killed 20 people I'll have probably saw all the different execution moves but after about 100 I was still being surprised by brand new ones that were popping up. The only weird thing about this though is if he's actually going in with a sword it tends to be a blue and if he's actually going to block and then going in with a sword it's a yellow then blue. But the point is if you get the combination wrong it doesn't actually matter. The only thing it actually affects is your XP now then when you go into the online mode and you actually are hunting for XP and getting them good combos, getting the actual quick time event correct is crucial. But if you're just plodding through the story and you get it wrong or even just ignore it, you don't need to do the quick time event. When it comes up and it flashes yellow you can sit back and not press a button and it will just continue with the execution anyway. And that person will die no matter what and I think that's quite weird, I think it would have been a bit more rewarding if Crytek would have made it, if you did the quick time wrong, it would have broke out the execution, you would have to continue fighting or even maybe you got stabbed back. So it is quite a weird thing, the only reward for getting it correct is more XP. Now I really did enjoy the actual story of this, it's actually set over 8 chapters and each chapter is around about an hour, some maybe even a little less. So all in all you can probably complete this game around about 6-8 to eight hours depending on how good you are at it. And that actually kind of worried me. This is a game that I wanted straight away just because it's so beautiful to look at. I thought I need it to show off the power of the Xbox One. But at the same time I was worried that once I actually complete this game, it would simply get shelved and I wouldn't play it anymore. 
but I was actually pleasantly surprised. I went all the way through it and enjoyed it so much, I ramped up the difficulty, the hardest setting, chucked it in and went through it all again. So for doing it through the second time on the actual harder mode, it took me I think about 20 hours, I'm not too sure. So the campaign itself is actually starting to get its money's worth. And then on top of that, there was the online mode, which I just thought would be a boring bolted on online mode. And when I first tried it, I was like, that's cool, I'm gonna get an hour out of it. And strangely enough, I'm about 15 hours into the online mode. Now the way that works is you can go in either solo, but it's more enjoyable with a friend, and you go into the arena and fight against the enemies. Now again, you can actually do the executions and things like that online, and the better thing is, is if you're with a friend, you can execute somebody together, so one will hold his throat with a knife while the other one cuts his stomach open. And to me, that is absolutely great fun. But on top of that, you also have things called powers. And these effects both on and offline. And what will happen is your focus will build up throughout the game. So as you do more correct executions, or if you actually stop people from hitting you, your actual focus bar will build up. And once full, you get to release a powerful attack. Now online, you actually get to change the actual type of uh, power that you use. Now they are very similar, most of them actually just slow down time so you can hit a lot more enemies which actually works great online because it means your combo can get quickly higher. We also have things like sending people out with actual gust of wind or she can actually set them on fire with a burning ring. But either way, this is a game that I actually expected it to not give me as much as it actually has and I am surprised. So the question is, is it worth purchasing? Now obviously if you've got an Xbox One and you contemplate about right, getting it, I would say get it, play it and if you're not a fan of it then sell it after because it's a game that's very enjoyable to play, the story is really good and it's worth actually going through it. But if you are a completionist and you want to get 100% on the achievements or you have a friend to play online with, I would say it's definitely worth purchasing. But if you are a person that simply collects games once you complete them, you're going to chuck it in, just do the story and shelf it, then you are going to get about 8 hours out of the game and it might not be worth the actual price tag. But all in all, I am pleasantly surprised by this game. It's actually beat my expectations. And the thing is, a lot of reviewers have given it a bit of bad press. But when I've taken to Twitter and I've actually looked at a lot of people that have played the game, they says, I can't believe what the reviewers have said because this game is actually a lot better than what the reviews say. So that's my first game in the bag. And the next game that I want to be reviewing is Power Star Golf. Now, the reason for that is I've got plenty of Xbox One games to review, but Power Star Golf is one of them which is actually a digital only game. So the thing is, a lot of people may be less willing to buy it because obviously you cannot return it. So I want to get that review done first and actually tell you if it's worth purchasing. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Cheers. Bye.